In 2022, Utah, like many Republican-controlled states, decided to go on a book banning spree, and one school district in Utah removed more than 50 books from school libraries, most of those books being LGBTQ plus affirming material. Now, towards the end of the year, Utah state lawmaker Ken Ivory, this individual here, authored legislation that expanded this effort by giving parents the authority to challenge and potentially remove books from schools that are indecent and or contain pornographic material. Now, this bill was actually passed recently and signed into law last week by Utah's governor. Now, this entire effort was basically spearheaded by one far-right organization called Utah Parents United, and their ultimate goal is to ban any LGBTQ plus related books or content that predominantly features people of color. And they won. They got what they wanted, but this victory comes at a cost because this group and the lawmaker who sponsored this legislation seemingly didn't anticipate the ways in which this could come back to bite them. And I say this because one of the first books being challenged is the Holy Bible. Now, because of this law, the district may be forced to remove the Bible from school libraries. The Salt Lake Tribune reports, Frustrated by the books being removed from school libraries, a Utah parent says there's one that hasn't been challenged yet, but that they believe should be for being one of the most sex-ridden books around. So they've submitted a request for their school district in Davis County to now review the Bible for any inappropriate content. Quote, incest, onanism, bestiality, prostitution, genital mutilation, fellatio, dildos, rape, and even infanticide, the parent wrote in their request, listing topics they found concerning in the religious text. You'll no doubt find that the Bible, under Utah Code, section 76101227, has no serious values for minors because it's pornographic by our new definition. District spokesperson Christopher Williams repeated what he's told other media outlets, quote, we don't differentiate between one request and another. We see that as the work that we do. He said the Bible challenge has been given to a committee to review. The process typically takes 60 days, but Williams said the committee is not done with this request due to a backlog as more parents have been questioning books. So apparently lots of parents want to ban books, but one of those books is uh, the Bible. Now this request was submitted, and if it's approved, then the Bible would indeed be removed from at least one high school in this district, Davis High School. And the school district is taking this request seriously, as they stated, because they are legally required to do that. And we just got a snippet of the parents' request from that article, but I think it's worth reading the entire letter. It's just two paragraphs, basically. Uh, but it's so good to read because this is exactly what parents around the country need to do. This is a classic case of malicious compliance, and this parent here is onto something. So the parent writes, I thank the Utah legislature and Utah Parents United for making this bad faith process so much easier and way more efficient. Now we can all ban books, and you don't even need to read them or be accurate about it. Heck, you don't even need to see the book. Seeding our children's education, First Amendment rights, and library access to a white supremacist hate group like Utah Parents United seems like a wonderful idea for a school district literally under investigation for being racist. I noticed there's a gap though. Utah Parents United left off one of the most sex-ridden books around, the Bible. Incest, onanism, bestiality, prostitution, genital mutilation, fellatio, dildos, rape, and even infanticide. You'll no doubt find that the Bible under Utah Code, section 76101227, has, quote, no serious values for minors because it's pornographic by our new definition. Get this porn out of our schools. If the books that have been banned so far are any indication for way lesser offenses, this should be a slam dunk. And that right there, my friends, is how it's done. And according to this law, well, the Bible shouldn't even be a question. They're looking into it currently, but there is, without a doubt, pornographic and indecent content in that book. So since the law makes no exceptions for holy books, unfortunately for them, the Bible is fair game and it may very well be removed because of 
their law. Now, what's even more hilarious about this story is the response from the author of Utah's book ban. Because when he gave parents the authority to propose book bans, he very clearly didn't foresee the Bible being one of the books that a parent would challenge. And as a result, he is, quote, very sad that one parent would abuse the process. And he even says that this parent who submitted this challenge to the Bible is wasting the district's time because apparently all of the other book bans, that's not wasting the district's time, but a book that he doesn't want banned, well, that's a waste of time. So as LGBTQ Nation reports, Utah State Representative Ken Ivory, who sponsored HB 374, described the request as a political stunt that would drain school resources. <laughs> There was a purpose to the bill, and this kind of stuff, it's very unfortunate, he said. There are any number of studies that directly link sexualization and hypersexualization with sexual exploitation and abuse. Certainly, those are things we don't want in schools. For people to minimize and to make a mockery of this is very sad, he complained. <laughs> the audacity of him. How dare this parent make a mockery of the process? Because, of course, when we passed this legislation, we didn't expect the parent to propose a ban to a book that we like. And even though the Bible does objectively contain content that, by the definition of our law, would obviously be pornographic and indecent, well, I like that book, so let's not ban that book. Let's just ban the books that I don't like. Mm, sorry, it doesn't work that way. Based on the law that you wrote, the Bible is fair game. He just didn't like that something that he prefers in schools is now being challenged. And what I love is that I'm assuming the same people who don't want the Bible banned, who support book bans, is going to be mad about this one as well. This book is called Sex. If you're scared of the truth, don't read this. And this book is being challenged because of the provocative title, but the book is actually about abstinence. But because the title is very obviously indecent or could be perceived to be indecent, well, this also could be removed from school shelves for violating Utah law. Sorry, evangelicals, that's another L for you. So I think, I think that this is an obvious point to make, but I'm going to make this point anyway because it's really important. Whenever there's a state that has laws like this, this is what parents need to do. Challenge the Bible. Because this is how you use their censorious laws against them. You challenge the material that you know they hold most near and dear to their hearts. And when they see how censorship laws go both ways, well, maybe that'll give them a little bit of pause before passing these kinds of draconian censorious laws in the first place. But either way, the parent here is absolutely brilliant, well played. And again, if you live in a district that allows parents to challenge books, priority number one for you is challenging the Bible. When you acting like a beta, 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 beta,